Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter Thirteen, Modern Physics Video Eight. Today's topic is classify subatomic particles. Objectives are know the difference between a hydron, and an atom. know the difference between a baryon and a, a meson, know the difference between a particle. Be able to determine the charge of a given baryon or a, a meson. Subatomic fermions. So we know uh, all the particles are either matter particles or force particles. So today we're going to uh, concentrate on matter particles. So these are matter particles. Matter particles are made of quarks. There are six quarks and six leptons. So although proton, neutron, and electron have been considered the fundamental particles of an atom, Recent discoveries from experiments in atomic accelerator have shown that there are actually 12 fundamental particles with 12 antiparticles. Protons and neutrons are no longer considered fundamental particles in this subatomic classification. So all matters are classified into Hydrons are held together by strong force. There is strong nuclear force holding these particles together. But leptons, there is no strong nuclear force holding leptons with any bond. There, there are two types of hydrons, baryons and mesons. So baryons held together by strong force. There are two types of baryons, uh, hydrons held together by strong force. Two types are baryons. Baryons has three quarks, and mesons is made up up of a quark and anti-quark. So the two very famous baryons are protons and neutrons. The charge on a baryon can only be four choices, zero, positive one, positive two, or negative one. The other, on the other hand, the charge on a meson can only be zero, positive one, or negative one. So there's three choices for meson and four choices for baryon. So baryons are made of three quarks. These are the examples of baryons, a proton, a neutron, a lambda particle, a cascade particle. So proton have three baryon, uh, three quarks is up and up and a down. So two ups, one down quark. A neutron made up of up quark and two down quark. A lambda particle has up, down, and strange. Cascade has up, strange, and a bottom. So mesons are made of quark and anti-quark pairs. Mesons is a particle of intermediate mass. Pions, up, anti-down or anti-up and down, or up and anti-up, or down and anti-down. So those are all different kinds of pions. And there are also different kinds of kaons. So those are pretty famous mesons. Let's take a look at this example, quarks and leptons. So what is the difference between a quark and a lepton? So we know a quark has strong nuclear force acting between the quarks but leptons do not, does not form strong nuclear force with any other particle. So quarks, there are six fundamental particles among the quarks. First generation is up and down quark. So all matters that we know of are made of, are made of the first generation of quarks. That means they are made of either up, up and down combination. For a proton, you have up, up, down. So that's uh, very important. The charge on the proton. So look at your reference table. Your reference table, the charge on the up is positive two third, and plus another positive two third, plus a down. Down is negative one third. So when you add it together, you'll have the charge of a proton is positive one e. Ch neutron is up down down made one up quark and two down quark. The resulting charge on a neutron is up is two third, down is negative one third, and another negative one third. So the charge on the neutron is zero, it's neutral. The second generation of quarks is charm and strange. 
and the third is top and bottom. So there is a special um, baryon, it's called cascade. Cascade actually is made up of all three generations. One from the first generation, one from the second generation, one from the third generation. It's you, up, string, and the bottom. Actually, you can find all this information from your reference table. Leptons, remember lepton does not form any strong nuclear um, uh, interaction with any other particles. So lepton has a mass much smaller than that of quarks. And lepton uh, classification of subatomic particle consists of six fundamental particles. The most famous lepton is electron. Then we have muon and uh, tau. So muon and tau has a little, are uh, they a little massive than electron. For each, for each one, we also have a neutrino. We have electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. So these neutrinos also have a little mass, very, very small amount of mass, but they don't have charge. Unlike electron, muon, and tau, they all have a negative charge negative one elementary charge okay again reference table gives the name symbols and charge for the six members of the lepton family so next one is baryon could have what kind of charge remember i talked before baryon if you add any three together any three quarks to form a baryon that you can only have pos four possible outcomes which is positive one positive two zero or negative one so which one can have baryon can have what charge can only have three okay number three protons and neutrons are example of baryons because they are both have three quarks so they are baryons let's take a look at another example give an example of a baryon with a positive one charge so the most famous one is proton proton is up up down right the other choices you can have top top bottom or charm charm strange they all give you a positive one charge antiparticle so an antiparticle is associated with each particle an antiparticle is a particle having Ma mass left time spin spin identical to the associated particle but with charge of opposite sign if it is charged for example antiproton is the same as proton have the same mass same spin everything is the same except it has a negative charge negative one elementary charge okay so if it doesn't have charge what's the difference the difference is magnetic moment revert is reversed has reversed the sign that means the way it spins is reversed uh so anti-proton another one is anti-electron anti-electron also name a positron okay stands for anti-electron anti-electron has positive one elementary charge otherwise it's just like an electron has the same mass same spin neutron has no charge so it's anti-neutron also have no charge so what is the difference uh what is the difference between uh, anti-neutron and neutron anti-neutron has uh its magnetic moment and the spin of anti-neutron are in the same direction however the magnetic moment and the spin of neutron are in the opposite direction so it's the way it spins is opposite and the anti-neutrino I think this is pronounced as epsilon, right? It stands for antineutrino. This is again identical to neutrino. Remember, neutrino has no charge. That means the direction of spin is opposite. So fundamental particles, there are six quarks and corresponding six antiquarks. There are six leptons and corresponding six antileptons. So total together, there are 24 basic or fundamental particles let's talk about antimatter antimatter is a material consists of atoms that are composed of antiproton antineutron and antipositron and the positron i mean anti-electron which is positive
Pretty much everything in the universe is made out of matter. The Earth, air, you and me, stars, interstellar dust, all matter. By which we mean that these things are made out of electrons and quarks, and very occasionally other rarer matter particles like muons, tauons, and neutrinos. All of these particles are, at their fundamental level, excitations in everywhere permeating quantum fields. But as the famous quote goes, for every particle, there is an equal and opposite antiparticle, an opposite excitation in the everywhere permeating quantum field that has all of the exact same properties as that particle, except opposite charge. And since these antiparticles are opposite excitations of the quantum field, when a particle and antiparticle meet, they annihilate and destroy each other. Which is pretty much exactly like how the equation x squared equals 4 has two solutions, 2 and minus 2, with the same value but opposite sign, and when they meet, they annihilate. Every fundamental particle has an antiparticle. There are antiquarks, antineutrinos, antimuons, antitauons, and of course antielectrons, though we call them positrons. Since antimatter particles are essentially identical to regular matter, other than the opposite charge thing, they can combine together in essentially identical ways to form antiprotons, antiatoms, antimolecules, and in principle anything from anti-ants to antimatter horns. We can also make the really cool positronium atom. It's like hydrogen, except instead of an electron orbiting a proton, it's an electron orbiting a positron, until they annihilate each other in under a nanosecond. Because every particle of antimatter annihilates with regular matter upon meeting, it's really hard to make anything big out of antimatter. At this point, we're still only able to make and contain a few hundred antihydrogen atoms at one time. And when a particle and antiparticle annihilate, the energy has to go somewhere, which is why matter-antimatter annihilations have been proposed as bombs. But naturally occurring antimatter is hard to come by. So unlike a uranium fission bomb, which allows us to release the bottled energy of the supernovas that forged the uranium in the first place, you'd have to put all the energy into an antimatter bomb yourself by making antimatter which you do by agitating empty space into pairs of matter and antimatter excitations. Kind of like hitting zero with a hammer to get out two and minus two. Except instead of a hammer, you use a particle accelerator or high energy photons of light. Photons, incidentally, have zero charge and so are their own antiparticles, in the same way that zero is equal to negative zero. In fact, mathematics has always been closely tied to antimatter. The mathematics of relativistic quantum mechanics predicted the existence of antimatter for years before any had ever been discovered. The fact that there's so little antimatter around in the universe to discover is both an obvious thing, because if it were around it would have destroyed us, a good thing, because it can't destroy us, and a puzzling thing. If matter and antimatter are basically identical mirror images of one another, why did the Big Bang produce so much more matter than antimatter? No one knows, but to physicists, the answer matters. Okay. So now let's take a look at this example. What is the charge on anti-tau particle? So look at your reference table, see what's the charge for tau. Anti-tau is exactly tau has negative one E, anti-tau has positive one E. That E means elementary charge. Next one, a charge on a K ion is composed of up quark and anti-strange quark. So what is charge on this type of K ion? So look at your ref reference table, see the up quark as positive two-third and anti-strange quark. So there are two examples. The subatomic particles that made up both protons and neutrons are known as quarks. Right? Uh, again, protons is up, up, down, and neutrons is up, down, down. A lithium atom consists of three protons, four neutrons, and three electrons. This atom has how many total quarks and how many leptons? We know it has three electrons, so must have three leptons. So the answer can be either C or D, it can't be A and B. Now for each proton, you have three quarks. So that you have nine quarks for protons, and for each neutron, you also have three quarks. So you have 12 quarks in neutrons. 9 plus 12 give you 21 quarks, so the answer is D. That's it. Thank you very much.